Well, hello there. Today, I thought I'd record a video just like the good old times, right? It's been a while since I've done this. It's been too long. And I hope to do a lot more of the stuff more regularly. It's just that there's been a lot of ups and downs and trials and tribulations that have been going on in my life as of late. And I've had to face a lot of things that I didn't even know I needed to face that I've been repressing and suppressing my entire life. Things just all came out at once, which I'm honestly grateful for. But one of the really nice highlights of this is that it's pretty much completely transformed my life as an artist, and that's where I can bring a lot of value to you guys. I don't want to bore you all with my life story and all that, but hey, you are all paying to hear from me and listen. I'm sure this could interest you as well, and I think that's one of the things that I'm letting go of worrying about this and that and just putting things out that i want because that's how ergo josh started that's how my youtube channel started that's how my instagram account started people are free to make decisions for themselves and move on if there's something else that interests them or if they're no longer interested in what i'm sharing right that's completely fine so fun fact this year i've only made one new drawing i think it's march 9th it's three days after my birthday, by the way. I turned 29 on March 6th, and I've really thought about it. I've only drawn one new thing this year. Everything else has just been working on other stuff, and that's very abnormal for me. Like, we're almost past the first quarter here, and I haven't created anything new. That just goes to show you how my life has changed due to fighting things like depression and also trying to be hyper productive and efficient, which is incredibly difficult. <laughs> trying to manage the most important work in your life with also the most difficult time in your life. But something that came out of it was the final chains holding me back as an artist have finally fallen down. I feel this feeling that I think every artist probably will get to where you realize that the only thing holding you back from learning different things is time. You feel like you can learn and accomplish anything, any style that you want. You just need enough time. Like Batman. You just need enough prep time and I can take down Superman because I'm Batman. <laughs> you, you get like that. And I feel like that has happened as a result of all of this. After making it your career to draw for so long, doing other things, and you come back, and I'm not going to lie, there is a real degradation that happens when you go months on end without creating as you used to be. But there's also this freedom and curiosity, this lightness that feels like it's easier to pull things out of my mind and find more of that unique creative spark within me to tap into it. And it's probably due to a lot of the mental health work that I've been doing, but I've experienced it repeatedly enough to know that this isn't just some weird fluke. And so I wanted to talk about it today as you can watch me work on doing what I'm talking about, which is just taking your work to the next level and taking yourself more serious as an artist. Yeah, I feel lightweight and I feel like when I go to make a piece of art, things just become clearer. And so with this piece, it's one of the characters from Squid Game, the Netflix series. It's a great show if you haven't seen it. It can be a little bit scary, but I think it's really moving. I don't know if her name was Su Young Bae or something like that. I use that word here to refer to the main character of this illustration. I don't know where I found the original reference and I was trying to find it again, but I couldn't. So I was like, all right, Josh, you've painted enough. You don't need the original reference but it gave me the idea to just paint this intense food eating scene where she's going crazy eating some food really fast. And that would have been a nice color study, right? I wanted to try to do something a little bit more cinematic, but then I paused on it, but it was only halfway done. I didn't really want to finish it. I was happy with the results. I pushed myself with my understanding with color further. I didn't actually start this piece out using my grayscale strategy. And when I came back to it the other day, I might explain this too harshly, but I was like, I felt like this is a waste. Why not make this into something? Why not draw and just let your mind go free with it? 
And so I started thinking about, okay, she's eating really fast, looks really intensely at the food while she's eating. So on the side, I was just writing ideas. And then as I was writing, I transitioned into drawing. I wanted it to feel disgusting and grotesque. I saw a film called Hunger. It was a gorgeous film about a woman working under a world-class chef who, when he cooked something, it was all of the different arts in one. It was food, visual art in multiple different ways. It was really fantastic. And every time he would always make the rich people that could afford him, they would always film it in slow motion when they were eating the food. And it was so good that they would always eat very messily and it just looked barbaric. And it's interesting how grotesque eating can look without your proper manners and using utensils and whatnot. So I wanted to draw from that feeling I got from those specific scenes in that film here. And then immediately she's using chopsticks. I think of seafood. And then I start thinking of octopus or squid arms clamoring over her. And then even before that, I was thinking about her eating different pieces of social media as if it was a, a bowl of cereal, each little cube of let's say Wheaties or something became a little social media block. So I had that idea, but it quickly transitioned to tentacles pulling at her face. It gives the impression of pulling her eyes to stay focused on the food, or maybe I just make it refer to money as a symbol and just keep going with all this stuff and make a very cliche type of well-known statement with this piece about how overconsumption and social media have really hurt us. I won't say it hasn't had incredibly positive effects on us, which a lot of people overlook. And now I have this octopus squid thing, like pulling, sucking at her face, and there's like huge ones behind her. There's even an arm pulling at her arm eating. <laughs> and it's like, there's this little feeling like she's fighting back in a way, but also completely losing. Yeah. And maybe the octopus wants to be eaten. It's weird, right? I wanted it to be crazy. This is an illustration where I knew the drawing and the elements are going to be what's strong here. But at the same time, I'm like, well, why not take advantage of this opportunity and share what I'm experiencing with you all? If I had posted this the way it was, it would have done pretty well. People recognize her as an actress. Something where the face is clearly visible always does well, right? Because we're people. But even if I don't render the shadows on the tentacles at all, and I just give them a color and I post it, it's going to do so much better. This now becomes a statement. It becomes more than a study. It becomes a work of art. Fans of this actress will want to show to other people, look at this crazy. Oh my God, look at the eyes. Look at, oh, look at the tentacles. Like I want to add the highlights in there because you got to have that when you're painting it tentacles you got to make it look juicy that's where i had some of those references on the left of some mukbangs i found on pinterest i wanted people to look like oh it's grotesque oh my god why is she doing that is that eating her like i want that to be what people are thinking of what they're feeling that just stops you in your tracks you're gonna want to share it you're gonna have something to say about it right that's the goal here i realized i could take myself to the next level by just following this crazy path that I had and making it something more. Instead of it being so planned, it's more like structure around the natural process that works really well for me. That is what I want everyone taking my course to leave with. Beyond anything that's limited to a certain software, it's something that I want to equip people who want to be independent artists to be able to have in their toolkit which is knowing their process really early on, really quickly adapting to it so that they can optimize it and make a living out of it, ideally, without it sacrificing who they are as an artist. Because I do believe that's very much possible. I think the only issue is that we need to understand what type of lifestyle we want to live and focus on making sure our actions are aligned with that. And there's no reason you shouldn't be able to carry yourself doing what you want to do. Since the invention of the internet, conventional jobs are going to be a thing of the past. And soon this whole influencer thing is going to be very common and normal to have as a career. 
I just think it's inevitable because once the internet became a thing, the amount of communication that can happen just opened the floodgates for all sorts of possibilities. Now somebody with their really weird and unique idea and passion for something can have a hundred thousand other people that love what they do support them from the other side of the world, right? The tricky part is trusting that if you can figure out that thing for yourself, you won't have to worry so much about the algorithm and everything. That's the real trick behind all this that I'm finding true for myself, but it's so worth it. I still consider myself lucky to be learning all of these things before 30, even though now it's, oh my God, it's less than a year until I'm 30. Oh my God. I feel like I hit pause at 18 in a lot of ways. Like I could have learned everything I know now at 22. Maybe that's some of the trauma coming in there and I'm just putting ridiculously high standards on myself. <laughs> it's probably that. One of the things I noticed as a really strong sign of this change is that taking a break from looking at all art in general, including my own, when I would come back and look at stuff, I was like, wow, this is impressive. I felt a lot better about stuff that I thought was terrible at the time. And I think this might be a rare situation to be in, but when you've really pushed yourself for so long, so hard to improve, you really can get this really weird tunnel vision of intense judgment and criticism about yourself where you only see the mistakes and how to improve and how to iterate better and do better. But when I come back, I'm like, this is nice work. I love how I would shade this and put detail here. I can see how I can improve it. But I think one of the things that just came to me now is I can see the real big improvements rather than seeing little things. For every skill level you're at, the goal is to look for those big, huge moments where you learn, oh, there's this fundamental issue with my piece. I can completely change it to where it's a lot better. It's not so much about the little nitpicky things, learning how to render this properly or this strategy or like making sure you can master this texture. It's those big overarching things. And so now that I know those things really clearly, when I look at something I completed 18 months ago, I don't get so stressed about it. I see, yeah, I didn't know how to focus my values here or have a clear focal point with the work, but this is really cool and this is really cool and that's really cool. So I'm seeing it from the perspective of someone else almost where yeah, there's a few big areas I can see that I wasn't aware of when I was working on this project, but it's still really good for what it is. I'm impressed. I think back then you only see all these little problems and all these things you wish you could do, but you can't really zoom out and see, nah, you just need to do a whole new process in between these two steps and then it'll be a lot better. You don't need to worry about those tiny little things, but in the moment you feel like those things are huge and they just pile up on you. I think that's a practical way to look at having more compassion for yourself, which I think a lot of artists need. <laughs> You're not gonna grow full speed. You're gonna be very slow if you are extremely heavy on yourself and you punish yourself. But the, the problem with that is, is that for a lot of us that works. For a lot of us being very heavy with ourselves, it works, but it's just like having one hand doing all the work instead of two or one side of your brain. There's a whole other side that thrives on you being not controlling and mean and strict for you to do well as an artist. There's a whole side that you will not be able to tap into if you stick to the whole like, oh, I've got to push myself side. And I think the same goes for the opposite. The people who never challenge themselves to have a certain limitation, such as time or wanting to reach a certain level of realism, then they're not going to get much improvement past a certain point either. But if you can balance both of those, you know how to force yourself to do the work, but you also know that there needs to be plenty of time where you just paint and draw and just see what happens and enjoy it maybe not even draw or paint for a while and go experience new things and work on other hobbies that will come back and help you in this hobby. So I encourage you, if that's a new thought for you, really think about how much of 
your work is you forcing yourself to improve and do better and how much of it is just let's just doodle i'm really happy with my understanding of 3d form to where i can think okay if i want the tentacle to pull her eye open there's going to be a gap and that means the eyelid is going to be tight on the other side. And since the eyeball is a sphere, I need to draw a tight squeeze right here, but still leave a little gap in the corner for the tear ducts. Being able to think like that allows you to draw things in a way that looks realistic enough, right? It's been a really cool journey to see and understand everything that worked from a very clear point of view and see how my core belief in life that I had pretty early on, at least one of them did come out to be true. And that's the, the natural way is the best way. It's humans and people that have made things complicated. Once I figure something out, I always believe it'll be like, how did you not know this? And I think that it's a good thing to adopt as well. Anything you don't know, just assume there will come a time if you want to know it, if you want to understand it, that it's just normal for you. Because anything that you really do, if you think about it, is nothing for you. Walking used to be incredibly challenging. Talking used to be incredibly challenging. Now it's nothing for you. You just don't remember how hard you had to try. And a lot of us don't have an opportunity to see ourselves achieve things that take one or two or three years because of a lot of that being forced. And it, it's just a shame we don't see that value in ourselves and realize that if you want to do something, just give yourself a few years. I love the saying of, oh my God, should I go to college for this? Or is it going to be a waste of time to learn that? Well, it's five years are going to happen from now to five years, regardless. We know that's a fact. So you could be five years older and have five years of experience with that or five years of not having experience with that. If there's nothing else you know you guarantee want to do, then why not try five years of experience learning this language? Alexa, Siri, give me a summary of every single thing I said today and curate my day based off of your own biased opinion. Well, I think that's that. I'm going to get back to doodling on this a little bit more and then editing these brush videos and getting everything out to you guys and hopefully getting something new out on YouTube today. <laughs> Maybe it'll be this video. Who knows? I hope you all keep drawing, stay balanced, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody.